Okay, one more example here with uh, vertical and horizontal asymptotes. And on this, there's a learning curve. This P here stands for the percent of correct responses, and N stands for the number of times that a person is allowed to take a test over and over and over again, okay? So we could get a table of values. We could graph the function. And in fact, it is worth it to put this. You're going to have to put this function into the uh, y equals. And I did that already. And you can see that I had to put parentheses around the numerator and the denominator. So parentheses around the 0.6 plus 0.75. Parentheses again, x minus 1. Close parentheses. Close parentheses divided by open parentheses around the entire denominator. I look at this function. I see that it is a rational function because I have a variable down the denominator. Now, a typical question on this might be, uh, no matter how many trials a person has, no matter how large n gets, what is the highest percent correct a person can get? You might say 100% correct. But that isn't necessarily true. We'll have to uh, see what happens to p as n gets large. So what we're looking for here is a horizontal asymptote. As n gets larger and larger, going out the x-axis, as n gets larger and larger, is the percentage of correct responses going up, 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 higher and higher and higher? Is it going to drop off, get lower, or is it going to level off to a horizontal asymptote? Well, there's a couple ways of finding a horizontal asymptote that we talked about. One is to make a table of values and put in large values for n. I have this in the y equals, so I can go to my table menu, which I have set for ask, and I can put values in. And for example, at 10, you're up to 84.9% correct, or 0.849. At 100, you're up to 87% uh, uh, percent right, almost 88%. And you might think, well, you'll probably get to 100%, but actually, it, even if you had 1,000 tries at this test, you still only go up to about 88.882 or 88.2 percent correct on this. What about if you had a huge amount of tries at this test? If you took this test a million times, well, still 88.235 percent. So that's probably getting extremely close to what the horizontal asymptote is right there. So that would be fine. Or another way of realizing what the horizontal asymptote is is to take a look at the power on the variable. The power on the variable in the numerator is to the first power, and the power on the denominator on the variable is to the first power. Since both are to the first power, then it has a horizontal asymptote. And the location of that horizontal asymptote is at the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator. If you take 0.75 divided by 0.85, so let me do that a second. So if we take 0 0.75 divided by 0 0.85, we get 0.88235, so on. So that would be the exact location of the horizontal asymptote. That means that no matter how many trials that a person has at this test, they will never reach this percentage of correct responses. They'll get closer and closer to 88.23529% correct, but they'll never quite reach that correct uh, percentage of correct answers. Uh, so that would be the location of the horizontal asymptote. We could see that on the graph also. Let me table this one more time. You can see 0.88235 is the horizontal asymptote. And we also got 0.88235. And you could arrow over to see more digits. And so we're correct out to many digits. And if we graph this, and I graph this on the standard viewing window, I did a zoom 6. And the graph of this, you can also see the horizontal asymptote. The main part of this function is the right-hand side of this. And you can see that it is leveling off. And it levels off to the same height on the left-hand side. And what it's leveling off to is that horizontal asymptote of 0.88 something. Okay. Now, another fun question the person uh, might have is something about a uh, vertical asymptote, although that doesn't apply to this problem. But if somebody said, what is the location of the vertical asymptote on this? Well, we would just set the denominator equal to 0 and solve it. And I solve that in the math solver. So let me hit math arrow up to solver and hit enter. Then let me arrow up. And you can see I have the denominator, 1 plus 0.85 times the quantity x minus 1, set equal to 0. And then if you solve that, enter, alpha enter, 
you'll get the location of the vertical asymptote, which is at negative 0.1764. So we can almost see that on the graph, too, that it goes vertical right there. Let's take a look at that. Right around point something, see how it goes uh, vertical at that area. There's a vertical asymptote there. It means it's undefined at that point. In other words, if somebody had that many trials, that negative point something trials, which doesn't make sense, your percentage of correct responses would either be positive infinity or negative infinity. It's, it's, uh, it's a disconnected graph. It's not continuous. And there's a vertical asymptote at that spot. But that's how you can find your vertical asymptote. In other words, if I plug that value into this function, that value that I had for the vertical asymptote, I would get error because it's undefined at that spot.